What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we're talking all about the Wismec Rouleau RX. Two out of three. Two or three. The hang on, let me get my calculator up for this one. The RX point six 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 seven. You know what? Fuck it. We're gonna call it the RX two thirds. So stay tuned. That is right, YouTube. Today we're talking all about the Rouleau RX two thirds. I have no idea if that's right or not, but I'm gonna stick to it. Stick to my guns because that's what we're gonna call it. Now, a little bit of a side note here. Why do we have to use fractions in naming devices now? I mean, have we really used up all the names where we have to resort to using fractions? It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I sound like Jerry Seinfeld all of a sudden. It's like, what's the deal with? Uh, you know the drill. Anyways, guys, yes, we're talking all about the RX two thirds. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sure you guys will correct me down in the comments below like you usually do because you guys like keep me in check and I like that about you guys. Anyways, uh, pretty much full review here. We're gonna get down and dirty in just a second. Um, first thing I want to say though, before we get down and dirty, this device was sent to me at no charge from Gearbest for the purposes of this review. I will have a link down below to Gearbest in the description. I believe it's an affiliate link. I'm not 100% sure. Again, Gearbest, I'm not too sure about their affiliate link status, but I think it is. So just be aware of that. I don't want to lie to you guys. I don't want to mislead you guys. It may be a, a, an affiliate link and just going to put it out there. All right. Now that we've got that out of the way, what do you say? We get right to it and just get down and dirty with the RX two thirds and check it out close up. All right, guys, we're down and dirty with the Wismec Rouleau RX two thirds. Here it is in the packaging. We're gonna take this off really quickly here, show you the inside, what you get included with this thing. First off, we see the actual device itself. We'll move on to that a little bit later on. There it is right there. Getting underneath this little foam thing. You also have your instruction manual as I keep bumping the camera. Instruction manual right here again. If you guys want to read through it, you're more than welcome to. Um, kind of the basics there, so not a whole lot to show off. You also have this little warning, do not use ripped or torn batteries with your device. And of course, that is something I do recommend and I do preach. I have seen batteries short out because they were the casing or the, the batteries were ripped a little bit. Um, so just make sure that you are using properly protected batteries just in case. Uh, moving on to the bottom here, you have a USB cable just down here in a little plastic baggie that's kind of half falling out right now. Uh, and of course the other back if you want to use it with just two batteries instead of three. So we'll get to that later on though. I want to talk a lot about batteries in this thing because that is my biggest concern with this device. Uh, so the first thing we're going to look at is the actual battery compartment, what it looks like. I'm going to turn this off for a second and we'll get to the actual menu settings and everything later on. But again, I want to talk about batteries for a second. Uh, first thing I have to say, do not charge the batteries in this device. Seriously, please do not charge them in this device. It is not meant for balance charging. I was hoping it would be, and honestly, after one charge, I saw my batteries kind of almost unmarry themselves because it just didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. So make sure you have a, uh, an external charger for these batteries if you are using this. Uh, moving on from there, you have the third battery in here, and you have two in here. Now, if you try and turn on with just two without the backing on, it actually won't turn on. So you can see here, it's just not turning on. It needs a back plate of either this one or the other one to actually turn on. Speaking of which, the second thing I wanna warn everybody about is do not use three batteries and just simply take one out and switch the backing off. You do need to have two separate sets of batteries. You should have a married dual pair of 18650 and a married triple pair of 18650. This is my married triple pair of 18650 or trio of 1860s that go on all of my three battery devices. And I actually have two marriage sets of three just for uh, for extra battery life. It clips on pretty well. There's a little button down here to unclip it. So we just press that and it comes apart. Now, if we put it back together again, you're gonna see a few gaps here and you'll see a gap right along there and then right along there as well. Not too bad, otherwise it's a little bit uneven back here as well. It's kind of got that little ridge to it. If you guys can, it's hard to tell on camera, but you can kind of see a bit of a ridge you feel it more than anything, but it does show a little bit up uh, when you are looking at it with the three batteries on there. Uh, same thing happens when you use the two batteries. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to take this out. And one of the cons I have about this thing, by the way, is trying to get this battery out. It's really difficult to do. Um, usually I end up grabbing onto the casing here and you can see it's already starting to bend a little bit just because I have to use my nail to try and get in there um, in order to take it out. So one thing to keep caution of, just remember that. 
Um, usually I'll try and use like tweezers or something because it gets stuck in there sometimes. And I'll use like the plastic tweezers. Do not use metal because you don't want a shorter battery in here. Um, I'm not sure if it would or not, but I just wouldn't recommend it just in case. Uh, it probably would if there was like a, a metal piece sticking out here or something, or if there, you had a piece of canthal or something stuck in there and you tried to use metal tweezers to pull it out, it would definitely um, cause a short. So remember, either try and use your fingernail or try and use like a plastic pair of tweezers just in case. Um, anyways, moving on to the dual battery mode. I actually have two married batteries here. I only use LG HG2s. I find they get the best battery life. Um, these are the 3000 mAh, the LG Browns. So what we're gonna do is put them in here, take this out. And again, even taking this battery out right here is a bit of a pain. Um, again, I'm pretty much trying not to damage the casing, but it's very hard to the way this actual battery sled is designed. Um, all right, moving on, here we go. So there are two slots in there. First one goes in negative up, as I'm dropping batteries everywhere, and the next one goes up positive up. Just like that, get that back door on, and we will run it in two battery mode. And just kind of clips in back there, and again, that's your release for the door. All right, so we're in two battery mode. With two batteries, it will actually go up and max out at 150 watts, no more than that. So it's actually pretty good that it self-regulates. With three batteries in it, it goes up to 200 watts. Now there may or may not be an update releasing it to go up to 220 watts with three batteries, but until the time comes, I'm just gonna say it goes 150 to 200, um, depending on how many batteries are in there. Moving on from there, let's talk about the menu system. One, two, three. And we can see here variable voltage, voltage uh, sorry, variable wattage is actually flashing. To change that or to change from variable wattage to the other settings, you also have down here your puff counter. I've taken 1800 and 14 puffs on this. So I've used it quite a bit for this review, if anyone ever questions that. Now to change the actual setting, you hit this over button, and now we see a battery bar. I prefer percentage-wise. Now these batteries are fully charged, and you already noticed 95% life. So they're fully charged batteries. They're charged on my external charger. It's a good charger. It displays exactly how much um, voltage is on there, how much, uh, or how much has been charged. And in this, it's showing up as 95%. So it's a little bit worrisome. And that's why I say do not charge on this device because it will not auto marry your batteries and make sure to have two separate sets of batteries, a dual set and a triple set for using it in different modes. Do not use the same batteries in both modes because it's not going to end well for, uh, for marrying your batteries. I mean, we all know batteries is a huge investment, especially buying three at a time to marry them. The last thing you want to do is unmarry them just by putting them in a device like this. So just be cautious of that and make sure you guys are aware of what the consequences are to doing that. And let's go back to the modes here. We're going to change it. It's not flashing. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. Okay. So variable wattage. We also have temp control nickel, temp control titanium, stainless steel. You have your uh, user upload uh, wire and then you have variable wattage again. Going back here, one, two, three. And again, we'll rotate. You have a puff counter, and then you also have uh, the ohm. No, what is this? Okay, you have your amperage, the puff counter, and what appears to be another puff counter. I'm not sure what that is for. Um, maybe I've taken more puffs on it than I thought I did. 34.59, I don't know. But anyways, all right, so let's go back, and you have your battery, the mode, and the pop counter, or amperage. Again, I'm not too sure why there's two different pop counters on there. Um, I've only ever used this one, so 18, 14, I'm pretty sure that's what I've actually puffed on, but I could be wrong on that, so that's actually new to me. Um, and it's surprising I've used it this much, and yet I didn't know there's a second pop counter on there. I don't think it's for batteries either because I just replaced these batteries. So there's no way it's, there's one for your, like your battery life and one for, you know, the overall device life. Um, if it was, that would kind of make sense, but it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even tie into that. Um, anyway, so that's it. Uh, let's take these out, turn it off. One, two, three, four, five, five clicks off. Back door just pops off like that. Take the batteries out and I'm throwing them all over the place. And just like that. So that's pretty much the device in dual mode. In triple mode, it's the exact same menu settings. Nothing really changes. Um, the only thing that does change is the max wattage, which goes up to 200 watts. So I'll put these back in. Now these are not fully charged, by the way, so they're not gonna show up as a weird little um, odd amount of percentage. But anyways, put off to the side, put this one in here. 
negative goes up, positive goes down, positive end in first, just snaps them like that. And again, just snaps together. So pretty easy to use. Um, you can upload, uh, update software with this for it as well, which is what I recommend using it for. I don't recommend using it for charging, as I said before. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty much it. You got the 510 gold plated 510 pin. Uh, it is spring loaded. I'm not going to push on it because that's just kind of irrelevant to me. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys believe me. Uh, so you have some vent holes along the sides here. And uh, on the back one, it doesn't have any venting holes, which is a little bit of a con for me as well. I would have liked to have seen some vent holes in this back plate, but they didn't do it. Um, they also have vent holes down here as well. So the two batteries in there are plenty ventilated, but that third one is not being ventilated properly. And that's a huge concern for me. Another thing that I wish they would have changed on that. And again, it's being picky, I know, but battery safety is big for me. And this device for me was all about how well it actually handled battery safety. Um, so again, 150 watts, now we're gonna crank it up to 200 watts, which is where it should max out with three batteries in there. And you can see here, the batteries I have in there now are at 66%, and that's actually accurate. Um, talking about batteries again, because this seems to be all about batteries, the battery life on this thing is actually really good. It's very comparable to the 200S and the RX200 original, as well as my DNA200 Relo. Uh, all of them have about a day and a half battery life. I've got a little bit less on this one, uh, only because I've been using it at higher wattages with that TFB8 Cloud Beast. Typically, I use it around 100 watts from my other devices, and at 100 watts, this one will last about a day and a half for me. Um, but with the Cloud Beast on here, I get about a full day out of it, maybe a little bit more than a day at 132 watts. So it is definitely a big thing to mention. The other thing I want to mention as well is actually this percentage button, how it relates to the power you're actually getting out of it. Um, at 132 watts, I find that about 15% battery life or less you'll start to notice a decline in the wattage that's actually being put out. The one benefit to this though, is if it is at below 15% and you hit the button to vape, it'll actually read out the proper wattage that's actually being put out during this device. So for example, if I have it set to 132, but it has 14% battery life left, it might only read at 105. And what that's doing is basically dropping the wattage as your battery gets drained lower and lower until finally it dies out and you have to charge your batteries again. Um, that is one thing I like about it because a lot of these devices are putting out 200 watts in, a, in for example, a dual 18650, which we all, all know is not actually hitting 200 watts. Um, but the biggest thing is when the battery starts dying, it still displays say 150 or 200 watts or 132 watts, even though it's really only hitting at a like 80 watt range. Um, which is, is, is again, one of those things where I think this is up to you guys. Because some of you guys like to have it hit the same amount every single time until the battery dies. And if that means having fewer puffs in general for the battery life, you're okay with it. Whereas some of you actually like the fact that it'll start working the wattage down and down and down until the battery finally dies when it's down to let's say 30 watts or whatever. Um, so again, it's a mix of opinion on that one. I wanna know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you guys like it when a device dies at the same wattage every single time and has a consistent hit from 100% to 5%? Or do you guys like when it actually starts draining at say 15 to 20%? Um, now, I have had some devices start draining and start lowering the wattage at upwards of 50%. So there's 50% battery life left. And if you're hitting at, let's say, 130, it'll only hit at 102 watts, let's say. Um, so I've had that experience before where it starts dropping way too fast um, and you still have half the battery life left, but it's for some reason dropping much sooner than that. Uh, this one I found is much better and it's kind of a perfect compromise for me. It only starts to drop at around 15% and that's at 132 watts. Um, it starts to drop at about 10% if you're vaping at about 100 watts. So all things con comparable, all things considered. Uh, I really do like this thing. Battery life as well. The only issues I have is this percentage so sign. It's always off when I put new batteries in. And it scares me that it's unmarrying my batteries, which is a super scary thought because I did invest quite a bit in my batteries, obviously. You know, batteries retail from anywhere from $10 to $15 for a good, uh, a good battery if you're not getting a rewrap. And let's say a $30 investment in batteries, you're talking about unmarrying three batteries, you're gonna have to go out and get $30 every single time it unmarries these batteries, and I'm scared it's doing that right now. Uh, even though I am switching out between the three batteries married right now and the two married batteries for dual mode. So uh, that's pretty much it though, that's what I wanted to show you guys. I know it's a little bit of a longer down and dirty section, a little bit of rambling going on, but I wanna make sure I hit all the points, and a lot of the points were to do with the battery life and the batteries being used. Um, now, again, I should mention that the battery life I base this off of for about a day to a day and a half is off the LG HG2s, the Browns. I love these batteries. I use them for all my regulated devices. 
They do only have 20 amps, so I don't recommend them for mechanical mods or for uh, unregulated devices. If you're looking for higher amperage uh, batteries, I recommend the Sony BTC line or the Samsung 25Rs. The, both those are 25 amps. The LG H2 at 20 amps is good, but it's not quite there for, uh, for unregulated. I prefer using these in regulated devices. Um, anyways, think of rambling on enough. So that's going to be the down and dirty section. We'll take a back up top and give you my final thoughts on this thing. All right, YouTube, we are back up top with the Rouleau two-thirds. One thing I forgot to mention in the down and dirty section I'll mention right now is scrolling through the wattage. It's both a positive and a negative. And I'll tell you why. Because the big thing is with the DNA Rouleau, it had two speeds, Cheetah and Tortoise. Basically super fast or super slow. And it was a pain in the ass trying to get to the exact wattage you wanted. With this one, if you're scrolling fast, it's still legible where you can see the actual wattage going down or up, depending on where you're gonna go. And honestly, I can get to the exact wattage I want within about five seconds very easily from anywhere on this device as far as wattage goes. The only downside to that is when you're going slow. There really isn't a slow speed on this. The slow speed, what happens if you're trying to get to that decimal point in the wattage, so let's say uh, 48.3 watts. Let's just put that out there. I'm, that's not, I don't know if that's anyone's actual preferred wattage range. But I'm going to put it out there anyways, 48.3 watts. The problem is the W beside the wattage, so it'll say like 48W, um, it actually get, it actually blocks off the decimal point. So I'll see if I can show you up here. I'm going to try and zoom in here for you guys. Actually, you know what? I'll just bring it up to the camera. All right, so we can see here it has, hopefully it'll focus there if I can move my head out of the way. You can see here it has 132 watts in it. And you scroll down and the W still stays there. And when you turn to the decimal and turn back to W, So again, you can kind of see that the decimal place is blocked by that W, and it, it's just a little bit annoying. I would have liked to have seen the W shifted a little bit more. Um, it's a minor thing, I know, but it just bugs me a little bit, a little bit frustrating there. Not a deal breaker for me by any chance, but it is something that I do want to watch out for. Um, now, apart from that, that's pretty much what I wanted to touch base on that I meant to in the down and dirty section. I didn't, but the biggest thing I want to say is that overall, I do kind of recommend this device. Um, the only thing I want to say is be careful and watch your batteries. Make sure they're not unmarrying themselves. Test them out in other mods. If you have other three battery mods, just to make sure, or even other dual mod battery mods, just make sure that it's not unmarrying them and you're not getting off percentages on other mods. Because I have a hunch that it is doing that and it is actually unmarrying them. Unfortunately, I have no real way to test that other than time itself. So in six months, if these batteries become unmarried, um, it's going to be a pain in the ass trying to get new batteries to marry them. Uh, and, and even in, in two months time, I may see results as well. I'm hoping that's not the case and I'm hoping it's just a percentage that's off and it's going to be fixed in an update maybe. But I, I would suggest some huge caution with this device for anyone who has married batteries and is scared of unmarrying them. Uh, the second thing I want to reiterate is make sure you have two sets of batteries, a dual set and a triple set. Do not try and use a triple set and then take one battery out and use it in dual mode. It's not going to be good. Trust me. It will unmarry your batteries for sure, at least with the way it is now, unless there's an update for it to actually update the, the ability to have a, a balanced charger in, in the actual board, which may already be installed or may already be part of the board, just not being utilized properly. For all I know, it could be a software thing or it could be a hardware thing. Either way, take caution. Overall, like I said, do I recommend this? I cautiously do. I love the battery life on this. I love the screen on it. I love the simplicity of it. It's a lot like the original Rouleau. I love everything about it. I like the versatility of having two batteries or three, but then again, I have a set of three and I have a set of two. If you only have a set of three, is it really worth the upgrade? Probably not. Um, if you already have a Rouleau, I don't know if I'd suggest getting this unless you have a, a second married set of dual batteries that you can take advantage of using them in both dual mode and triple mode. Now, I did talk about the battery life in triple mode about a day to a day and a half. The battery life in dual mode is about 10 hours. And again, that's with the LG HG2s at about 120 to 130 watts. So it has great battery life in both modes, which I've noticed very well. So even if the percentages are off and it's reading at say 95% or whatever it was with two batteries that are fully charged, you do seem to get the best out of those batteries anyways. And it does seem to be hitting at 100% um, or, or basically using 100% uh, of the battery life as opposed to 95% of the battery life, like it's saying it's reading. I think it's an error on the screen or on the chip. I don't think it's actually, you know, causing the batteries to drain as soon as you put them in. I think it's just a little bit of an error there. It could be a misreading battery problem. 
but again, that could lead to further problems with marrying batteries and unmarrying batteries, which I've already talked about. So overall, I cautiously recommend this thing. If you don't have Relo yet, this might be the one to pick up. It's very affordable. Um, as I mentioned before, I do have a link down below to Gearbest if you guys want to check it out from there. It may or may not be an affiliate link. I don't know, but I will have a link there anyways. If you want to go there outside of this page, you're more than welcome to. Um, I don't force anyone to use my affiliate links or anything like that. So just be aware, um, you know, do what you want to do. And uh, hopefully this review was helpful, I guess. I know it was a long review, so I apologize for that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, that's going to end it for today. So thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, happy vaping. Shh. <laughs>